So here I am, on the final day of the 2020 World Economic Forum. It seems a lifetime ago that I woke up early on Monday morning, the alpine air fresh in my nostrils and excited for the week ahead. Since then, it's been a whirlwind of heavyweights, celebrities, insights and networks, Thunberg, Trump, Charles, Ivanka, Imran Khan, Sajid Javid, Steve Mnuchin. All of it topped out by a message from the Pope. If I were an autograph collector, I'd have needed a new book. The main event was a farewell buffet lunch at the Skitsalp, the so called Magic Mountain of Thomas Mann fame, with its Art Nouveau panoramic restaurant. I tried to take in the scenery, which is truly spectacular, but my focus was chiefly inwards, saying goodbye to old friends and reinforcing my acquaintance with new contacts. This might sound self indulgent, but it's really not. When you get to this level of business and global interaction, you come to understand that the personal touch is everything. The handshake, the warm glance of recognition, the passing word of greeting, it all matters. It's what helps you bridge the gap from going through the motions to forging a meaningful connection, and, while it may be unquantifiable, it really makes a difference. I've been thinking a lot today about Davos, and how the forum works. It's really not what you would expect. It's so far from the caricature of the powerful and well heels slapping each other on the back so hard that it takes the breath away. For the participants, Davos is a place for confronting uncomfortable facts of life, and if a good view and a glass of champagne soothe that process slightly, then I'm not going to judge. A harmful truth is better than a useful lie, man said. It could be the forum's motto. No one invited Greta Thunberg expecting her to tell the assembled politicians, financiers and entrepreneurs, you're doing great, I'm proud of you. Nor was the Prince of Wales any less blunt, in his own way. Now is the time he told us, and posterity will judge us if we stand idle. What have I learned? The so-called global elite get it. They really do. Only a few outliers, perhaps, admittedly, including the President of the United States, really doubt the scale or the immediacy of the crisis which environmental change presents. Everyone understands that we must change, that the way we have conducted ourselves over the past 50 or 100 years is simply unsupportable. We have raped the world of large proportions of its mineral wealth, and we cannot undo that. What we can do, as individuals, as leaders and as societies, is take stock, assess the damage with a realistic eye, and devise new behaviors which will first stem then perhaps even begin to reverse the tide of disaster. But, as Dr. Faustus understood, the devil is truly in the detail. If we agree on the what, and are forging a consensus around the when, the how remains hot for more on this story. Visit the news article link.